Hi everybody, as all of you know that we are continuing on playlist on Google Cloud Associate exam. So guys, before this we have published all the topics, their content and practice question based on these topics. From today onwards, we are going to do some practice tests based on the questions that have been asked in previous exams. So guys, today we are going to solve few questions in upcoming videos. We are going to do more and more practice so that you will be able to clear the exam very clearly and very efficiently in very less time. So guys, before we move ahead, please like this video and subscribe to the channel for getting more updates regarding this. So guys, I request all of you to watch those videos before watching this practice test because I have covered all the concepts which we are going to use in this practice test in our previous videos. So let's discuss our first question. If you look at the first question, you can see here, your development team needs a new Jenkins server for their project. You need to deploy the server using the fewest steps possible. What should you do? So guys, practically you can do different things. You can create a new compute engine instance and you can install the Jenkins server on that interface. First thing. Secondly, you can do also this like you can create a Kubernetes cluster on the compute engine and create a deployment with the Jenkins Docker image. But guys doing all these things, you need to do a lot of steps. But here it is written that you have to do with fewest possible steps. So guys, while we are studying cloud deployment manager at the same time, I have told about GCP marketplace. So guys, in this case, you have to use GCP marketplace. You can use GCP marketplace to launch the Jenkins solution. Whenever you are going to launch any software or any package, which is already available in the market, then in that case, you should go for GCP marketplace. It acts like Google Play Store or Google App Store. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. If you look at the question, you are the project owner of GCP project and want to manage both buckets and files. You want to follow Google recommended practice, which IAM role you are going to use. So guys, you can see here, we have different roles like a storage admin, a storage object admin, a storage object creator. But I have told you guys, while we were reading about cloud storage roles that if you are going for a storage admin option, then only you are going to get access of both buckets and files. If you are going to get an access for storage object admin or object creator, then in that case, you are going to have only access for files, but not for buckets. But here you can see they're asking for both buckets and files. So that's why you should go for the option of storage admin. Now let's move to the next question. You can see here, you have an object in cloud storage bucket that you want to share with external company. Okay. The object contains sensitive data. You want access to the content to be removed after four hours. The external company does not have a Google account to which you can grant a specific user based access privileges. You want to use the most secure method that requires the future steps. What should you do? Here they are trying to say is that there is a company which wants access of your Google Cloud Storage bucket that you have saved. But you want them to get access only for few hours. If you are going to give them access of a storage admin or a storage object viewer or creator, then in that case, you are going to give them access for so long. But here, you want to give them access for only four hours. So guys, while we were studying about different Google storage options, then in that place, I have told that there is concept of signed URL. So guys, you can create a signed URL with four hours expiration and you can give the access to the company. So the company can get the access of particular object or file only for four hours. The answer will be create a signed URL with four hour expiration. Okay. Now if you go to the next question, you can see here, we have deployed a microservice called MyApple to a Google Kubernetes engine cluster using YAML file specified below. I have not mentioned the YAML file because that is of no relevance. You need to refactor this configuration so that the database password is not stored in plain text. You want to follow Google recommended practices, what should you do? Guys, like one thing we have missed while studying Google Kubernetes cluster that we have different kind of objects in Google Kubernetes. Like we have secret object, we have config map object. So in secret object, we store our passwords. Okay. So you can see that the option B will be the right, like store the database password inside a secret object. And, and you can use the YAML file that will refer to this secret password. And again, this will be populated as DB password in environment variable in the YAML file from the secret. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. You can see here, you need to select and configure compute resources for set of batch processing jobs. These jobs take around two hours to complete and are run nightly. 
you want to minimize service cost what should you do so guys here there are different options you have to read the options very carefully okay why i am saying this because if you read all the options very carefully then in that case you will be able to eliminate the options now there are few points which we have to look in in this question the first one is set of batch processing jobs okay this is not real time job now second thing is that job takes around 2 hours only 2 hours is being taken by the job to be completed okay and you want to minimize the cost also so these three combination you have to keep in mind so guys i have told you the concept of preemptible virtual machine so if you are going to use preemptible virtual machine then in that case it is very cost effective also it is very suitable for a small work or for small jobs okay because here you can see we are going to use only 2 hours so guys this option will be the correct answer let's suppose they might have asked in the question that they want to run the job whole day and these jobs are non restartable jobs so in that case preemptible virtual machine should be eliminated because preemptible virtual machines cannot be used for non restartable job also guys if you want to thank me for my efforts for my content then please give super thanks on youtube it will help me it will act in motivation so guys please like this video and subscribe to the channel for getting more updates regarding this